makes Christmas. The trees with their tinsel, the lights, the presents, the food. Or is it something else? Something that moves deep down inside the human soul and for a few hours touches it with greatness. That is our story today. The story of an old man who once, as a boy, for a little while, knew divine courage. And of a Christmas when hope was the only angel in empty skies. Here now, the Columbia Workshop's special Christmas show. It's Margaret Leworth's adaptation of a true story by Dale Unson. The special musical score is by Alexander Semler, and the workshop director is Werner Michel. We present The Day They Gave Babies Away. It's Christmas Eve in our times. The old man sits in his chair. The firelight plays softly on the deep, graven lines of his face. The big, firm hands are still. He is asleep. Father. What? Hey, what's that? Oh, Father, did I wake you up? Uh, no, no, I wasn't asleep. Why in turn nation would I be asleep on Christmas Eve? It's the greatest night of the year. Time to go out and see your neighbors, ring their doorbells, and wish them good cheer. Oh, you're not going out tonight. Well, I'm thinking about it. Father, it's not a blizzard. My girl, you've never seen a blizzard. Now where are you going? Just over here to get my album. I can't go out and see folks. I can have them in, can't I? Yes, they're all here, Catherine. Every one of them. Jimmy and Annabelle. Kirk and Elizabeth and Jane. All here, just like yesterday. Father, don't sit up too late. Now what in thunder are you doing? Oh. Drawing the curtains. Drawing the curtains on Christmas Eve, not on your leg. Oh, but anybody can see right in, Well, Father. sure they can. Sure they can. And I hope they will. I hope they look right in and see the tree all fixed here. And if they like it, I hope they come in. You can't ever tell, Catherine, who might be standing outside on Christmas Eve. Yep, it's Christmas. Makes 84 of them. That other Christmas doesn't seem so long ago tonight. The last time we were all together. But when you figure it up, it's 72 years. Folks wouldn't understand it today. The little rough house we lived in on Fox River, Wisconsin... Mama, I can see her now standing in the doorway, wondering where we all were. She was always wondering that, I guess. Robbie? Robbie! Now, where in the world... Here, Mama. Oh, another black eye. Where did you get that? Jackie Crowley. He said his father built better boats than Papa. He did, did he? And his father learning it from Papa. Now, Robbie, you shouldn't be fighting. That's no way to settle things. It's quick. Go up and wash for dinner. Yes, Mama. Mama, when I grow up, I'm not going to build boats. I'm going to work in a logging camp. Have you been hanging around that camp again? Well, Mr. Max said he didn't mind. Well, I do. It's full of rough men and rough ways. You're going to have some learning if it's the last thing your father and I do. Now, now, ring the dinner bell. Your father's got a luncheon this afternoon. Gee, Mama, how long does it take to grow up anyway? A long time. A real long time.
Harry Unson Boats. <laughs> and now, come around to the house, folks. We'll have a little celebration and jingle. <laughs> Put down. Like this. You just mixed me up. Oh, you'll never jig. Go back to your dolls. Girls can't do anything. I can't, too. I can learn to dance just like Mama. Yeah, the best of all, her and Papa. Look at them. I'm going to grow up to be like Papa someday. You couldn't. Why? Because you're always fighting, Mama says. Oh, you're only a girl. What do you know? Robbie. What? Robbie, look. Look at Papa. Oh, gee, what's the matter with him? He's leaning against the wall. See how funny he looks? Robbie? Robbie? Yes, Mama? Robbie, run down and get Mrs. Pugmire right away. Tell her to come here quick. Your father has taken awful sick. <laughs> Oh, hello, Jackie. Want to hunt possums? I can't. Oh, you never do any more. I can't. I... Robbie, you better go now, Jackie. Yes, Mama? See if you can get that fire going a little better. And pin another shawl around the baby. I'm going over to Mrs. Kramer's with these shirts. Yes, Mama? When I get back, you better do your homework. There's no sense in this school stuff. I'll not have you talk like that. I know all about last week when you skipped school to go rabbit shooting. I didn't go rabbit shooting. Where did you go? Upriver. To the logging camp? Yes. Oh, Robbie, I told but you... Mama, Mr. Mack might give me a job. We could use the money now that Papa isn't here anymore. Well, couldn't we? Oh, Robbie, Robbie. You get to those books. Your father wanted you to have a learning and you're going to have it. Now, if the baby cries, give her a sugar stick. I'll be back as soon as I can. You back again, kid? Haven't you got anything yet for me? Ah, I told you last week. This is man's work. Why, you couldn't even lift one end of those saws. I could do something. Yeah, sure. Get in the way of a big one when it crashes. Logging camp's no place for kids. Come on, Mac. Ciao. Yeah, new logger, hey? You better throw him back for size. <laughs> well, I am big, and I'm strong, and I can fight, too. Yeah, I'm shivering in my boots. <laughs> well, look, I can do that. What? That soup bucket. I could carry that. Watch me. See? I can carry it. That's hot soup, kid. And, and the cups. I can carry those. Two, four, five, seven, ten, and thirteen. I can carry the bucket and thirteen cups. Isn't that worth something to you? Like in the logging camp, Robbie? Now, never mind, Robbie. Don't be telling Jimmy. It's bad enough you're there. Just this winter. That's ne all. Next spring, I'm going to work on the riverboats like Papa. Stop talking about work, all of you. You're going to be reared and schooled like everybody else. All of you, the way your father wanted. Kirk, get down your violin. Play us a tune. Can we have a jig at Christmas like we always have, Mama? Of course, my darling. But you'll have to learn first. Play up, Kirk. I'll show you how. One, two. One, two. One, two. Mr. Mack? Yeah? Can I ask you something? Well, what is it? What time will you be wanting me here Christmas Day? Christmas? Bring soup up here on Christmas? Well... I didn't know. No, oh, nobody works up here Christmas. Most of the boys will be in town, hitting it up with their pay. Hey, you stay in home and see Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Well, you got... Well, you got kids in the family, haven't you? Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. 
Thanks, Mr. Mack. Thanks a lot. Well, that's the three o'clock shift. Get on with that suit, boy. Think those men want to wait all day? Hurry up there. Get your bucket. Yes, sir. Robbie! Robbie! Jimmy, what are you doing here? I know you're spying on me. No, Robbie. Following me up here. Mama told you not to. When I get rid of this bucket, I'll show you. Robbie, listen, it's Mama. She's sick. Sick? Yeah, she's awful sick. She talks funny. She's asking for you. For me? Yeah, you gotta come right away. I'll ask Mr. Mack. There isn't any time, Robbie. Please, you gotta hurry. Mama's calling you. She keeps calling. <laughs> Who'd have thought in less than a year? Poor little motherless tykes. Six of them, too. What in the world is to become of them? Well, that's what we have to decide now, this afternoon. Oh, but, Frank, six of them, it'll take time. Hmm, of course, I'm only a neighbor, but uh, if you ask me, it's up to the town. We could all contribute something and, and pay Mrs. Pugmire a little salary to look after them. Sort of starting an unofficial orphanage. Fox River ought to have one anyway. What do you think, Doctor? Well, there's a lot more to starting an orphanage than hiring Mrs. Pugmire. It's a big undertaking. It's expensive. Excuse me. Uh, yes, Robbie, what is it? Can I come in? I- I'd like to say something. Well, come along, son. All this concerns you. Uh, I know. I've been listening outside. <laughs> well, that's honest anyway. I-, I had to, Doctor. Mama left me in charge. You? Why, Robbie, you're only a little boy. I was 12 last July. Mama said I was to look out for us. Well, uh, what is it, son? I'd, I'd like to ask you something. For me and my brothers and sisters. Well, what? Well, tomorrow's Christmas. Yes? Would you all please go away and let us spend Christmas by ourselves? Well, uh... Alone, Robbie? Yes, ma'am. See, it's almost our last chance to be together. And... Well, uh, can you, uh... Can you make out? Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir, we can make out. Are we going to have presents tomorrow, Robbie? Well, no, I, I don't think so. People probably wouldn't think it fitting to bring presents to us just now. What's going to happen to us, Robbie? Nothing, nothing at all. We just go to school and live here in Fox River like Mom and Papa wanted. Well, I don't want to go away. You're not going to have to. Uh, there, you started Jeannie crying. Uh, oh, oh, Jeannie, don't cry. Nobody's going away. There, that's better. It's Christmas Eve, Jeannie. Nobody cries on Christmas Eve. Why would we go away anyway, Annabelle? Didn't Mom and Papa come all the way from Scotland so we could grow up here in America together? Where's Scotland, Robbie? Oh, it's a long way off. Hey, Elizabeth is asleep. <laughs> so is Jane. Oh, they're just babies. We better put them to bed. You go, Kirk, and you too, Annabelle. Oh, I don't have to go. I'm grown up. You're only seven, and you've got to go. What are you and Jimmy going to do? We're going to talk about things. What things? Just things. It isn't fair to have secrets. Yes, it is. Everybody can have secrets at Christmas time. Now, you go on. Go to bed, all of you. Just like if Mama was here. Have you got a surprise for us, Robbie? Yep, we got a surprise. Are they all asleep, Jimmy? Yes. Are you sure? I just looked again. And I guess we can talk. Gee, Robbie, what are you going to do? They're going to send us away the day after tomorrow. No, they're not. You can't stop them. You're just a boy, same as me. I don't care. They're not going to send us away. How do you know? Because Mama said we were to stay here. She said I was to see that we did. How can you? I don't, I don't know yet. I'm thinking. See, Jimmy, folks feel different about things on Christmas, don't they? I, I guess so. Then we have to do it tomorrow, Jimmy. Tomorrow, before it's too late. Food. 
to our youth and us to thy service. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas, Dad. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas, son. Merry Christmas, Grace. Merry Christmas, dear. Well, now, let's have a go at this goose. <laughs> Why, it's a picture, my dear, a picture. Never saw a handsomer fowl. Are you hungry, boys? Oh, my. Visitors are all ready, and we just started dinner. I'll go. No, no, now you carve. I'll go. Why, Robbie, come in. And Annabelle, too. Come in, both of you. We're trying to join us for dinner. Well, thank you, Mrs. Tyler, but we haven't really come for dinner. It's about Annabelle. I'm Annabelle. Oh, well, what about Annabelle, Robbie? Well, I, I was wondering. That is, Jimmy and I were. Well, we all wondered if you'd... Well, a sort of... Of a sister for the boys. A sister? Annabelle is awful good, and she could be a lot of help. She, well, well, that is, she was learning to sew, and she can wipe dishes, and she knows her ABCs. A, B, C, D, E. And she wouldn't be much trouble, and George, a little girl. <gasps> Tyler, oh. I can't breathe. Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> with Elizabeth, Jimmy? I've been all over town with her on the sled. What about Annabelle? They took her. Gee, Elizabeth looks awful cold. We can't keep her out much longer. The potters weren't home. The bakers were out, too. Gee, we didn't figure on that. I thought about the Carters. Mr. Carter runs a saloon. I don't think Mom would like that. <laughs> oh, listen, Elizabeth. We're going to get you home soon. Oh, don't cry. Please don't cry. Her nose is running, too. Oh. Hey, Jimmy, there's Mr. and Mrs. Stevens in that sleigh. They haven't got any children. But he's the principal at school. He'd be awful strict. We can't help that. Look, he's slowing down. Hello, boys. Can we give you a lift? Well, thanks, Mr. Stevens. We were just coming to see you. Oh, were you? How nice. Well, can we do anything for you, sir? Well, you can, if it wouldn't be too much trouble. It's... Elizabeth. What about Elizabeth? Well, that's her on the sled. That's she. That's she. And we thought maybe since you and Mr. Stevens don't have any children, you'd maybe like to take Elizabeth. Take her? What do you mean? Well, I mean sort of a doctor. She doesn't look very pretty now, but she's bright, and you might learn to like her. Mama and Papa did. A doctor? Oh, my goodness. She's small, but she could learn. Now, wait, and... wait a minute, Robbie. I have to think. Frank. I, uh, it would be a lot of work for you, Jesse, a burden. You're not used to children. I know. I know I'm not used to children, but how I'd love to be. Do you want to think about it, my dear? No. No, I don't have to. Frank, it's our Christmas present. The little girl God didn't send us. Elizabeth. Uh, you boys come and see us, uh, will you? Yes, sir. Thank you. And giddy up. Giddy up. Come on, Jimmy. We've got to go home now and get Janie. You will do no such thing. While I'm in this house, we're not going to take that child off anywhere. But Mrs. Runyon... I'm taking Janie myself. Oh, no. Oh, yes, I am. And a good thing I got here in time. But I heard what you were doing. Well, I've just been here waiting for you to come back. It's my duty as a citizen of this town... But, Mrs. Runyon, we haven't done anything wrong. Trusting you, a 12-year-old boy, to give children away like... like puppies. Pack Janie's things. I'm taking her now. I'm sorry, Mrs. Runyon. You can't have Janie. She... she's already Promised? Promised? Who? Well, well, that is... It's nobody you know. I know everybody in this town. And have for 30 years. And intimately, too. Well, these folks don't live in Fox River, Mrs. Runyon. They live... They live upriver in Berlin. I don't believe you. Well, you can't have her. Well, we'll see about this. You're just an impudent little boy. And I'll show you how we handle bad boys in this town. I'll be back in an hour with the authorities. Robbie... She'll get Janie, sure.
stars, anything. And he's awful. I know. You got to do something right away. We will. We're going to get Janie out of here before she gets back. Where? I don't know yet. Jimmy, you take Kirk over to the Kramers. They don't have any children, but Mrs. Kramer plays the cello, and you tell her Kirk can play the fiddle. He doesn't want to go. He's got to. He says he wants to stay with us. He, don't, he doesn't want to go over there. The sissy. He's got to go like the rest of them, see? He's got to. They took him. Mrs. Kramer looked sort of funny, and Mr. Kramer kept blowing his nose. But I guess it'll be all right. Now, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to take Janie up to Berlin as fast as I can. Do you know what, anybody up there? No, but I'll find somebody. Anybody be better than old Mrs. Runyon. Gee, we got to go before she gets back. Well, where are you going to go, Jimmy? I guess the Raidens. Mrs. Raiden always said she wanted a little boy like me. Do you like it there? Gee, no. They got four girls. But I think they'd have me. I can work and do jobs. Yeah. And I don't have to see the girls. Gosh, I can hear. Look at our little new brother. Ain't he cute? Well, ain't you? Listen, you. Ain't you cute, Jimmy? You want to fight? Yeah, do you? Nobody's going to call me cute. Ain't I? Come no. Now, no. give up? No. Give up now? No. Go on, admit you're cute. No. Admit it now. No. Okay, let's get up. Well, I've got to go now. Yeah, so do I. Got to get Janie up to Berlin to somebody. I'll be down to see you once in a while, Jimmy. Where are you going, Robbie? Well, I'm going to work. They'll give me my job back at the logging camp. I'll be all right. I guess you will. Well, Merry Christmas, Robbie. Merry Christmas, Jimmy. That leaves only you and me, Janie. Guess we better start. We got a long trip up the river. I'm going to pull, you see, on my skates. You've only got to sit on the sled. You won't be afraid, will you, Janie? Oh, no. It'll get dark soon, but the moon's coming up, see? Moon. And it'll look right pretty on the ice and all. Here, I'll fix you on the sled. Keep your mittens on, Janie, and the blanket close up. There. There. Now, you're going to be all right. We'll find somebody nice for you, just like the others. That's it, Janie. Smile. I'll whistle. You're all right, Janie. See how pretty the woods look? All black against the moon? Oh, oh don't cry, Janie. It's only five miles more, maybe. Janie, Janie, we're here. Oh, gee, you're asleep. Guess I'll have to carry you up into town. You were good, though. You only cried twice. Gee, it's awful cold. Come on. Oh, there you go. Well, oh, go down this street. See, there's a house with lights. Gee, there's singing in there. Wake up, Janie. Listen to him. Oh, you can't, can you? We'll look in the window. Yeah, they're singing. And Janie... Janie, they got a big Christmas tree. A real one. I... I guess you like it here, Janie. Thank you. 
Now, who could that be at this hour? Wait a minute, children. Well, for mercy's sakes. Ned, come here and look. It's a little boy and a young on a sleeve. Come in, Sonny. Oh, please, ma'am. I know it's late and Christmas is almost over. But I wonder... I wonder if you'd like to adopt a baby. <laughs> Christmas 72 years ago at Fox River. And what happened after that? Oh, well, a, a lot of things. Annabelle grew up in comfort and plenty. Finally had a large family of her own. Mama would have liked that. A and Jimmy got to be a lawyer. Yeah, that would have pleased Mama, too. Elizabeth was a school teacher, and Janie became a music teacher. And Robbie? <laughs> well, he went back to the Lawton camp, and he came to live to 84. <laughs> Midnight, and it's Christmas again. Well, I guess it's time to go to bed now. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. That was The Day They Gave Babies Away, as presented by the Columbia Workshop. The script was written by Margaret Lee Worth and based upon a true story by Dale Unson. The workshop's director today was Werner Michel, and the special musical score was composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Appearing in the cast were the following players. Ben Cooper as Robbie, David Anderson as Jimmy, Joan Lazar, Bess McCammon, Henry Neely, Neil Madeline Pierce... Edgar Staley, Gladys Thornton, and Agnes Young. Columbia Workshop will originate in Hollywood, where William N. Robeson will direct Rain, Rain, Go Away by Walter Newman, which, like today's program, has a special appeal to all the family. Saturday night is good listening with CBS, so stay tuned in now for Larry LeSeur and the latest news. This is Don Baker speaking, and this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.